Let's quickly revise the common congenital teratogenic infections. Coming to CMV, cytomegalovirus, 10 to 15 percent will be asymptomatic and there will be a clear cut history of dealing with toddlers. Then Toxoplasma gondii, the definitive host is cat. There will be a typical history of eating undercooked meat and coming in contact with the cat feces. 80 to 90 percent patients with Toxoplasma will be asymptomatic. Rubella is considered to be the most teratogenic infection and 25 to 50 percent of the mothers are asymptomatic. Regarding rubella vaccination, you have to remember it is contraindicated in pregnancy because it is a live virus. Now, if she is getting vaccinated after delivery and she wants to conceive again, there should be a period gap of minimum one to two months. But in case after vaccination, she gets pregnant and she comes to you for abortion, you do not need to do an abortion. You have to tell her that the risk of congenital infection as such is very low. Yes, it is contraindicated to get pregnant within one month, but if she gets pregnant, you do not need to opt for abortion. Then talking about parvovirus B19. It is the most common agent of non-immune hydrops because it attacks the erythroblasts of the fetus. It replicates inside the RBCs and causes fetal hydrops. There will be a typical history of contact with the school children. Another name of this disease is fifth disease and there is a typical slap cheek appearance in the children as, as if somebody has slapped their cheek and the nose is spared. Parvovirus B19 is the only virus which does not cause any congenital infection but it leads to stillbirths, abortions, hydrops fetalis and fetal anemia. Then coming to varicella zoster in pregnancy. Congenital varicella syndrome, if it has been diagnosed in pregnancy, that is an indication for MTP. The patient will give a history of contact with a person who has had chickenpox and the most common rashes, the area on the body is the trunk. Then talking about herpes genitalis, it is painful vesicles, typical history of painful vesicles arising in the genital area, no other part of the body is being infected. The incubation period of herpes genitalis is 3 to 12 days. What is the route of delivery in herpes genitalis? Now, if the question says that she is having vulvar pain, even though you cannot see any lesions, even then you have to do a caesarean section because it can be an active herpes genitalis somewhere else. It may be rashes somewhere else on the body. It is not being seen in the vulva, but she is having vulva, vulva pain. So, that is a prodromal symptom. But if there is already an active lesion in the vagina, then yes, she has to go for a caesarean section. What are the indications of vaginal delivery in herpes when there is no active lesion and no pain in the vulva? Right? During vaginal delivery, you have to avoid artificial rupture of membranes, you have to avoid fetal scalp monitoring and you have to avoid instrumental delivery because you do not want to abrade any tissue of the mother and you do not want the secretions of the mother and the baby to mix. What is the disease that causes congenital heart disease and that is rubella? In which disease do we see intracranial calcifications? When it is periventricular, it is CMV along with microcephaly. When it is intracerebral, it is generally toxoplasma along with hydrocephalus. So, microcephaly with CMV, hydrocephalus with toxoplasma. Both are giving intracranial calcifications. One is periventricular, another one is intracerebral. Cause of sensory neural hearing loss. Most common cause will be CMV followed by rubella. Cause of cataract, most important cause is rubella. Another cause is varicella zoster. Psychiatrical skin lesions will be seen in varicella zoster followed by herpes genitalis. When do you see brain atrophy along with microcephaly? Zika virus and varicella zoster virus, both of them can lead to brain atrophy. What are the most common infections being transmitted in the third trimester? It is CMV and toxoplasma. Most common uh, gestation of transmission is the third trimester in CMV and toxoplasma. But the severity of toxoplasmosis is more if it is transferred in the first trimester. Second trimester transmission is seen in rubella, in parvovirus and varicella zoster. In rubella, the severity is maximum in the first two months, but generally the transmission is before 16 weeks. In parvovirus, it is between 13 to 16 weeks and that is the most important time when the hepatic hematopoiesis is happening and that is what leads to high drops in the baby. In varicella zoster, it is between 13 to 20 weeks. So, third trimester is toxo and CMV. Second trimester is rubella, parvovirus and varicella zoster. That is all you need to know about the infections. Thank you.